relax. He isn't supposed to call until 6 o'clock. And it's not 6 o'clock. You're right, Jim. You're right. But now what do I do, Jim? You got all the clothes in? Yep. And I close the lid and set the timer for about uh, four, 12 minutes. That's all very true. To a woman, the most important thing is how it looks. Yes, styling was important to Nancy, sure. You know, when a thing's engineered right, it's beautifully simple. Simple. That's exactly the point. Appliances? Why, it's the same with furniture, automobiles, houses, anything. If you want to make it easy to live with for a long time, it's got to be made simple. Simple and functional. That's all there is to styling. Well, at least that's what I always say. And, Mr. Denning, it is easier said than done. How do you go about styling a new automatic washer? As with engineering design, you begin long before the first washer ever goes into production. It is a process of patient deliberation over hundreds of styling ideas. Eventually, you get down to a half dozen final selections and minute details of form, balance, color, and working requirements. Here, for instance, is a pleasing design. Good form, nice balance, deft use of color. But it was rejected. You'd have to raise a second lid to place your clothes in the tub. Here's another idea, equally attractive at first glance, but chrome trim, like seasoning in food, has narrow limits of tolerance. So, partly because of over-seasoning, and again because raising the whole top seemed unnecessarily cumbersome for women, another rejection. So it goes, with rejections and refinements, measured always against the best interests of the ultimate user, leading at last to the one best styling design. A clean line, simply designed, purely functional beauty, and the long search is over. It is worth the effort because even though the average person, Charlie Danning, for instance, may not know why, he finds it easy to live with for a long time. Don't you ever inhale? Go ahead and deal. <laughs> And stop gloating. <laughs> Never figured to peg out on both of you. <laughs> it won't happen again, I assure you. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jim. Let this one be on me. Well, I suppose Nancy would be lost without it now. Without what? Well, that complete laundry outfit. Oh, yes, I guess you would. <laughs> Marilyn, too. I guess we all would. Service is expensive, huh? Oh. Does that mean it isn't? Or you don't know? Both. We haven't needed service yet. But I'm sure Tom Mulligan stands squarely behind everything he sells. You can say that again. Tom Mulligan handles only the best. And he backs it up with good service. At least that's what I've always heard. A good name, worthy of friend-to-friend -friend advertising, is a very desirable asset. To be a permanent asset, it must stem directly from the manufacturer and be continuously built into the product. Without effort, it is not easily gained. Without constant vigilance, it is easily lost. At the plant in St. Joseph, Michigan, Constant Vigilance goes by a simpler name. They call it Quality Control, and it starts with incoming materials and extends throughout all plant operations. You find quality control in precise laboratory tests made before any quantity shipments of materials are accepted. You find quality control in giant operations that keep in mind the human factor. For safety's sake, all hands must be on the starter buttons before this press will operate. You find quality control in specially designed machines, such as this tangent bender. For greater strength, it forms the automatic washer cabinet from one piece of sheet steel. Then an automatic welding machine, called a stitch welder, completes the one piece construction.
you find quality control in better ways to do such things as painting. These ingenious automatic paint sprayers lay on an incredibly smooth, even finish through electrical attraction, an entirely new principle. But most of all, you find quality control in specific checkpoints, not only at the finish stage, but at every step of the way. More than 10% of the workers here are quality control inspectors, and you find them checking every part of every machine. Every base plate assembly is checked to make sure the supporting studs are perfectly aligned. In soundproof, quiet rooms, running tests of all moving parts are made. In this instance, the gear case assembly. Every one is tested before it moves on. The heart of the suds return system is the two-way valve. Every one is checked for possible leaks before it moves on. In other quiet rooms along the final assembly line, every completed machine gets final working tests before it is tagged satisfactory. And you'd think then they'd be satisfied. They're not. Every day, accepted machines are pulled off the lines. They're given complete and punishing test runs, just to make sure, again. There's a good reason for all this concern with quality control, how to maintain the flow of mass production and maintain the highest quality standards at the same time is always a problem. But there is only one answer to the problem here. It is supplied by daily reports of quality control. If they should indicate serious trouble, there is a man here with power enough to say, stop the line. Actually, there has never had to be a stoppage of production such as this. Quality control itself is the safeguard. New methods, better equipment, constant checking keep the rhythm of production on a 24-hour beat.
good name, worthy of friend-to-friend -friend advertising, is worth all the effort. Carol, why don't you go in the water? Oh, I'm too lazy. Oh. Honestly, if Mother wonders out loud just once more how the men are making out, I'll scream. I wonder myself. Well, that's a mighty neat job if I do say so myself. Say, Jim, won't Nancy be surprised to see this? <laughs> more likely amazed, Charlie, amazed. Oh, I don't know. No more than Claire and Emmy when they find out about your hidden talent for washing clothes. <laughs> I've still got our wash to do. Me too. <laughs> Say, Charlie, I suppose Emmy, uh... Yes, George, just like Clara, week after week. Why? Why not? They kind of deserve it. So let's really surprise them both. You mean the whole works just like this? What do you think, Jim? I think you two birds have been stalling your wives long enough. You can afford to give them a real holiday. Come on! <laughs> Nuts. What's the matter? Tom Walligan. Suppose he is still there. How do we know that he's prepared to deliver two complete laundries at this short notice? Well, why don't I call him? If he's still there, I'll explain the situation. <laughs> Fine. Please, Mr. Walligan. Just a few minutes. Uh, please. But, Miss Danning, I gotta close up now. I know, I... I know you want to leave and everything, but... Yeah, well, with my wife, I gotta have good reasons for missing dinner. But I'm sure she will understand. Line's busy. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Yeah? Well... Hey! That means he's still there. Come on, Charlie. Keep calling Jim and tell him we're on the way. Okay, fellas! So you can see how important it is to us, Mr. Walligan. Yeah, well, I, I'm sure you girls had a very good idea there, but... Remember the suffering Jets, Mr. Walligan? They never gave up till they won the woman's vote. No siree. Talk. I don't know what to say. Say anything. <laughs> the Bougainvillea are too. My mother has a new trellis in our house. Revere riding all night, up and down the countryside, shouting to the people, the British are coming, the British are coming, and... Glory be, the British are coming. Okay, kids, you win. And none of us had the faintest idea. Clara and Emmy are simply delirious. Just imagine George and Charlie taking the notion just like that. Well, what is the matter? Well, I was checking my theme at breakfast. Oh, yes. Theme. My goodness, Marilyn. You must have put a lot of effort into this. Mother. You'll just never know. <laughs> <laughs>